So from international scenario, let us move on to the position in India. So when we talk about position in India, the progress of victimology, that is the study of rights of victims, is taking up a gradual uh, progression. There are small steps taken. There are laws passed. The laws again, I will classify them into two. That is general law and special law. Under general law, we have criminal procedure code, that is section 357. Later it was amended to be A, B, C, 358, 359. Constitution of India, if you call it as one of the general law, then 32 and 226 articles provide for the victim compensation. Special laws, we have probation of offenders act 1958. Then we have motor vehicles act. Workman Compensation Act, which has been amended in 2010 as Employees Compensation Act, Protection of Human Rights Act 1993, under which National Human Rights Commission has been established and they are working towards the rights of the victims. The Criminal Procedure Code, Section 357, talks about imposition of fine and application of fine in a very specific manner. So when a court imposes fine on an offender and the offender makes the payment of the fine. That fine amount is applied towards defraying the expenses of the victim during the prosecution. So victim would be undertaking certain kind of expenses that should be met by this process. Then payment of compensation for any loss or injury suffered. Again here the rider, interesting rider is that where victim would have proceeded against the offender in a civil court claiming compensation. Such compensation could be provided by the criminal court during criminal proceedings itself. So the fine collected would be addressed to or applied towards the compensation of the victim. When the offender is guilty of causing death or abatement of causing death, then the compensation should be according to Fatal Accidents Act 1855, which provides for the continue, which provides for compensation in case of death. Then, if a person is guilty of uh, uh, offense against a property like theft, misappropriation, cheating, breach of trust, receiving stolen property dishonestly voluntarily assisting disposal of uh, stolen property, then the property that is recovered has to be restored back to the victim. So these are the way in which the 357 talks about application of proper, uh, the things, the compensation or fine collected. So appeal provision. So when we talk about punishment, the compensation allotted, that is appealed. It, it is appealable. So, in the interest of justice, the award of compensation should be made part of every criminal proceedings. That is what 357 is all about. And whatever order is passed by the court under 357 is appealable. So, offender can question the compensation allotted. The, there is a, a telling impact on civil proceedings because whatever the compensation awarded under 357 would easily set off the claim in civil proceedings. So we, the 357 takes care of the, the law relating to double jeopardy where he should not be punished twice under two different legislations. Judiciary also has stepped in substantially in protecting the rights of the victims. So, section 357 was interpreted in Swaran Singh versus state of Punjab, where they brought a relationship between 357 of CRPC with 545 old legislation of CRPC, then Fatal Accidents Act 1855. And they said that while implementing the provision of 357, accused capacity to pay compensation must be determined. So, the judiciary is of the opinion that if you order a compensation against a poor man, poor offender, then the object of the 357 would not be met. 
So, there is a need to assess the capacity to pay. Similarly, in Bachan Devi and another versus Nagar Nigam Gorakhpur and another, the court went on interpreting the term may that has been used in uh, 357. Interestingly, the court says that legislatures might have used the term may. It is as a matter of a pure conventional courtesy. So, the legislatures never intended it to be may. So, may in the sense option given to the judge either to grant or refuse to grant. It is shall to grant. So, conventional courtesy by the legislature should not be taken as discretion to the judge. So, that is what an interesting and important judgment was laid on by the court. So, while deciding a case under 357 of CRPC, there are certain relevant factors to be taken into consideration like nature of crime, injury suffered. These things I will just take up different slides to explain each one of them. Justness of claim for compensation, capacity of the accused to pay and where multiple accused are involved, then we have two options. Either the whole amount would be divided equally among all. If not, if there is a variation in the, the capacity to pay, then accordingly the liability could be varied. So, when you talk about nature of injury to victim, there are three interesting observations by the court. When a crime was committed and the victim's face was disfigured completely uh, and this disfigurement of face was the cause for payment of compensation because the disfigurement was the major damage done to the victim. When there was a death of a victim, the death was considered as the major cause because that made the widow and the minor children destitute. So, that became a major uh, concern while granting compensation. But when there was a death caused with a single blow by using a hammer, the court compensation amount awarded was far way below the uh, necessity that is they awarded only 20,000 rupees. Again here the nature of injury was taken into consideration. Capacity to capacity of the offender to pay is again taken into consideration at many uh, places and just and reasonable compensation is the buzzword among the judiciary. 